I've heard uh, Dr. Mehmet Oz, uh, who's also been part of this video series, uh, talk about uh, a noble cause that he believes that uh, healthcare, really even medicine, um, has an opportunity to be reinvented in a way that's more relevant not only to how people live around the world, but also that takes advantage of technologies. And he sees the ability to take the traditional Western view of medicine, which is event-driven, yep. and the Asian view of medicine, which is more that the body is a system and beginning to look at alternative ways of uh, dealing with uh, health, which can include um, you know, yoga, can include massages and, and coaching and things of this sort. How do you think about uh, the future of Audax in the context of uh, new ways to deliver healthcare, particularly as we have technologies like mobile devices and we have sensors that can uh, monitor almost everything? Correct. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it at its core, uh, no individual consumer or person looks at themselves as a patient. No one looks at themselves, introduces themselves to someone new and says, I'm Grant, I'm a diabetic. You want, you, if you're a patient, your whole goal in life is to not become a patient. And if you think about how that's possible, it's because health is so holistic and on one hand. On the other hand, it's unbelievably personal and private. So the balance between you know, having no one else know that I'm a diabetic and tapping the world's information 10 years ago was impossible because the only way you'd get to that information was you'd have to say, hey, John, I'm a diabetic. Are you a diabetic? But now you've got a billion people connected on Facebook. You have research. You have tools. You've got products. You literally have the world in your phone, um, and it's now a platform as a service. It's not just something you text or call somebody on. You've got web. You've got apps. Um, you know, iTunes is the largest credit card repository in the world, not because it's got songs, but because all the things you can do from that platform. So if you apply that to healthcare, now you can tell somebody, uh, hey, you need to go do yoga because, like me, I've had a bunch of knee surgeries. So if I do yoga, that will help you know, elongate my muscles and create core strength. And that's a complement to the physics and the rehab and the surgery that I've had, which is quote unquote Western medicine. And so mobile by itself can actually bring two worlds that were tens of thousands of miles apart or you know, six, 10, 100 degrees of separations apart into one seamless experience. And I think the biggest transformation in healthcare around mobile is personalization. Um, you, know, you see it right now with companies like Uber. So if you're Googling uh, coming to you know, this hotel, it actually recommends underneath it, hey, traffic is light. You could take an Uber, it'll save you more time. When healthcare can say, hey, John, you didn't get a lot of sleep last night. Maybe you should do these three things. That will change the world because it puts health in your hands and it makes it actionable. So uh, one of the big criticisms of the U.S. healthcare system is that it's a fee-for-service built around reimbursements, a lot of special interests who have elevated Correct. Uh, the cost of the entire system. So instead of having um, innovators and entrepreneurs designing the healthcare system up until now, it's been largely driven by politicians, by special interests, by uh, lobbyists, by above. lawyers, by all of the above. Uh, and the uh, real dream is that we can move from a fee-for-service reimbursement system to someday having an outcomes-based system where uh, you can, as you say, think holistically about uh, the relationship between the doctor and the patient or even multiple doctors with a patient, in the case of chronic care patients who typically have more than one doctor. Um, how do you think about the ability to bring in uh, really novel technologies because sensors now uh, are getting smarter, they're getting cheaper, they're getting more miniaturized, the kind of data you can capture from them uh, can actually be analyzed with predictive analytics. How do you think about the ability to actually bring in the measurement of the outcome of healthcare into this uh, behavior experience, this engagement uh, that Audax is really a pioneer in? Yeah, that's, that's the, um, I think the quantified self movement, the device movement is going to change healthcare more than any other, any other sector. I think Google Glass, some of those things are very interesting, but if you look at what data can do in healthcare, it, it'll change the world because now um, you can create unbelievably real-time, personal, precise recommendations by having something that looks the size of a quarter and knows how many steps you have taken, what your blood oxygen might look like, uh, what your hemoglobin A1, A1C might look like if you're uh, a diabetic. And through that, you can now empower a physician-patient relationship to not be broad in you know, roughly seven minutes a year, which is the current face-to-face -face interaction with the doctor and physician, but use technology to make up for the other 364 days and, say, 18 hours 
uh, where you're not in front of a physician. And so now you have all this data that you can bring back to the table and a physician can say, oh, so John, you've not been sleeping well recently. I see that you used to get eight hours of sleep on average, now you get six. And you can start to ask questions and have a conversation that data becomes the fabric for. And it's this unbelievably powerful movement where it's finally transitioning health from more art and less science to more science and less art. And one of the things most people don't realize is up until today, a huge part of the patient-physician interaction in our system is still art because you don't know a lot. If you are sitting down with a patient for seven minutes a year, what truly can you possibly glean until something happens? Now you have all these devices and data and constant inputs, and now a physician can sit back and actually manage data before you get in the, into the operating room, before you get into the uh, physician's office, and that's going to change everything on its head. And for us, all that data becomes what you can empower the patient to do, and they become unbelievable mediums of change, and they create something that's real. So now weight loss isn't this black box thing that I have to do. It's a very clear path of how many steps should I take a day, what should my caloric intake be, how many calories am I burning, and now it becomes something that I can do on my own, and I don't need a doctor or a special interest or anyone else to tell me how to do it. I can just do it myself, and that's what empowerment truly is.